Modeling motion with Newton's three laws has proven to be very useful in trying to figure out how something moves. However, there may be more complicated problems where it is just too difficult to look at the forces. Forces use a cause and effect relationship, making it a bit easier to understand. We know that net forces cause an acceleration. However, when modeling how something moves, there are different ways to do so. One example is by using the energy of the particle or particles. Motion can be seen when looking at all different types of energies. Kinetic energy of a particle changes when accelerating. The gravitational potential energy of a particle changes when its distance from the earth changes. The elastic potential energy of a particle changes when a spring gets compressed or stretched. As seen from the title of the video, we will be focusing on Lagrangian mechanics. There are a few ways to model motion, including Newtonian, Lagrangian, Hamiltonian, and quantum mechanics. Each method has its pros and cons. We all love Newtonian mechanics, but try modeling a double pendulum or a compound Atwood machine with that. This is where Lagrangian mechanics comes in handy. This is the equation that's going to be very useful in solving these problems. Now that looks very complicated. There's an L in there and a dot on top of a letter. But what we will see is a rephrasing of Newton's second law, except in a way that can sometimes make things easier. Let's look at an example where you wouldn't necessarily use Lagrangian mechanics, but can demonstrate how to use it with simplicity. One of the simplest scenarios to model is a falling object. Here we have our falling object. Now let's go back to the equation. It says that the time derivative of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot equals the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x. But let's, what exactly does x and x dot mean? So x is a position of the particle. This could even be an angle sometimes, as we will see in later examples. x dot is the first time derivative, meaning the velocity, or if it's an angle, the angular velocity. Now, what is the L? The L is the difference between the kinetic and potential energies. So what exactly are our energies in this problem? So we know that our kinetic energy is equal to 1 half m v squared and we know that our gravitational potential energy is equal to m g h but there's a problem with this this is not in the form of our generalized coordinate system so as i said before all x is is the position of the particle and all x dot is is the velocity so the zero point of our generalized coordinate system is the horizontal line as seen on the right side of the screen that means the height is just x, and that means the velocity is just x dot. So now we can make our kinetic and potential energies. The kinetic energy is just going to be 1 half m x dot squared. And our gravitational potential energy is just m g x. Now we have everything we need to form our Lagrangian. The Lagrangian is going to be equal to 1 half m x dot squared minus m g x. Now that we have our Lagrangian, we could just start taking derivatives. The partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x is the first thing we do. As you can see, there is no x in the first term, so that's just going to be 0. So all we're left with is negative m g. Now we have the other side of the equation. So we could start out by taking the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. So to find this, we can just use the first term and we can use the power rule. So we multiply the first term by two and decrease the power by one. And this will get us m x dot. Our last derivative is the time derivative of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. This is going to be equal to m times the time derivative of x dot. 
But remember what we said before? That's just going to be equal to m x double dot. Now we can go back to our equation and we can equate the necessary terms. And then we will get that m x double dot is equal to negative m g. Dividing both sides by m, we get that x double dot is equal to negative g. x double dot is just the second time derivative of the position, which is just the acceleration. So we get that a is equal to negative g. From here, we could take the integrals with respect to time on both sides to get the equations for velocity and then position. So the integral with respect to time of acceleration is velocity. And we will get that the velocity is equal to negative g t plus, in this case, the c, which is the constant, is just the initial velocity. From here, we could take another integral with respect to time to get the position function. We will get that the position is equal to negative 1 half g t squared plus the initial velocity times t plus the initial position. Now, does this look familiar? It should because it is a kinematic equation. So I said before that the Lagrangian equation is a restatement of Newton's second law. I'm going to show that now. So let's go back to mx double dot is equal to negative mg. mx double dot is just ma. And negative mg is the gravitational force on the ball, which in this case is the net force. So we can call that f. And now, if you want, you could write it the way it's typically written, which is f is equal to ma. That is it for this video. Uh, stay tuned for next video, where we use Lagrangian mechanics to find the equations of motion for a mass spring system. Thank you. Bye.